Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with my favorite segment of my channel and that is Minx Monday Q&A. So let's get started with the very first question. All right. From Mads1074. How much stuff can you actually fit into a clay? Surprisingly, you can fit quite a bit of items in there. Think of going extremely compact and what items in your wallet you would absolutely have to carry uh, driver's license credit card debit card uh, some cash maybe a lip balm all of that fits in the clay and then if you have your keys on the outside hanging instead of putting them on the inside you pretty much have your <laughs> your whole handbag just shrunken down into a little clay I think I've said it before uh, as well as myself, every LV addict out there will say that the clay is such a great piece. And when you look at it, you think, you you know, there's no way you can fit so much in here, but you can. It is incredible and they are fabulous pieces. So if you're thinking about getting it, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> uh, okay. And then you also have a second question. What is the ideal first ever Louis Vuitton bag? And in what print would you suggest? Once again, love you and your videos. Oh, thank you. I love you guys too. Uh, okay. So what is the ideal first LV bag? Okay. So out of the whole spectrum of Louis Vuitton bags, I would, I, in my personal opinion, I would have to say that the majority of them are canvas bags. Uh, they do offer tons of other leathers, exotic leathers as well. Uh, but I'd have to say most of the the percentages in the in the canvas bag uh, area. And um, if you're thinking about diving into Louis Vuitton and you're kind of skeptical on the brand itself, I think you would want to familiar familiarize yourself with the uh, the monogram print uh, for the sole reason that. A lot of the canvas bags, most of the bags, uh, most of the canvas bags are, are monogram and versus it being Demi Azor or Demi Ben, most of them are the monogram that you can get a wider variety of bags. And uh, you want to be able to familiarize yourself with the Vaquetta. And the Vaquetta will uh, patina over time. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say that it's... Uh, it's hard to care for, but there are some things that you have to make sure that you don't do, such as wearing uh, lotions and oils and stuff like that before you handle the bag because it will uh, change the, the color of the leather. So that's what I would say. I would suggest the monogram because it is extremely iconic. Uh, yes, the Demi Ben was the first uh, print, but if you're going in for Louis Vuitton, I'd say go for a Speedy, uh, personally, because I'm a huge Speedy fan, so <laughs> uh, I have a little bit more favoritism towards that bag, and I would go for the monogram, once again, so you can familiarize yourself with the leather and how it patinas, and then uh, later on, that way, when you look at Demi Azor pieces and they have Vaquetta, you already know how the leather is going to change or how it's going to uh how it's going to turn out over over time. And then maybe if you want wanted to go into Demi Ben. Did that make any sense? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, but that's what I would suggest. Uh, okay. And Gig Gigra, I'm sorry. Can you please tell us about your negative experience with Gucci? Or can you direct me to a video you already filmed? Um, I haven't personally, I haven't filmed a video on uh, Gucci itself. Uh, but it's more so me giving you thoughts about it on Minx Mondays. And all it is, is even though I can appreciate Gucci and, um, you know, the fashion house for what it is, uh, personally, I don't like putting so much money into a bag that is not going to hold its value. So unless it's a bag that I know I will keep until the end of time, I always want to put that, I always incorporate the fact that if I don't hold on to this bag, am I going to get somewhat of my money's worth? Yes, I put into account, you know, the, the fact of the time that I've used it um, and, you know, the, the overall quality of the bag or the overall use of the bag. But I just, there are some fashion houses out there that you spend loads and loads of money on these bags and it just... Eh, when you want to go resell them or when you, um, 
you no longer want them in your collection, you get nowhere near the amount of money that you paid. And like I said, these are all high-end luxury goods. And that's kind of a little bit of a peace of mind for myself when I do purchase these bags. I know that all these bags behind me, at some point in time, I will be able to get what I paid for them, depending upon if they increase in price or I will be able to get somewhat near to what I paid for them. Um, like I said, also depending upon the the overall um, the overall quality of the bag, or you know, the use of the bag. Uh, but that's that's the only thing about Gucci. I don't. I had various amounts of Gucci bags, and I had bad experiences every single time selling them. And it just, I did not like that fact. I didn't like the fact that I was. I was losing all that money. So it's not so much as it's not the brand itself. It's not the design of the per, of the purses or anything like that. It's just the fact that it does not hold the resale value for me. It's something that I look for when I, like I said, I put money into these bags. Um, but that is a great, great question. Okay. Uh, Evelyn Forbes. Hi, Minnie. What are your thoughts on Louis Vuitton Neverfull and Epi Leather? Is it worth it or should I... Or should I go towards the classic Neverfull bag? Uh, I absolutely love Neverfulls. Uh, and I absolutely love Epi Leather. Um, I like the fact that it almost seems like it doesn't show any age whatsoever. Yes, it does show age in the long run. But it takes a long, 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 long time for Epi to really show versus... Um, versus Vaquetta, for example. Once you start using the leather, a leather or a, a canvas bag with leather pieces on it, it'll start to show the wear. But Epi, it just it looks beautiful and the interior of the of the Epi Neverfull is fantastic. So if you had your eye on the Epi leather and that's the one that just your eye just keeps going towards, I would go for it. I think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag, especially especially because it has the silver hardware. And when you have a bold color of Epi, it just, the contrast looks fantastic. Whew. Love it. <laughs> uh, okay, Anna L. Hernandez. I have had my Louis Vuitton Demi Speedy for two years now, and I was wondering if some of the folding creases of, of the bag are normal to still show. Um, yes and no. Depending upon how often you use the bag, I know my Demi have been speedy 35 it took forever for the creases to come off because i didn't i didn't use it as much as my other speedies so it's all a matter of how long you've been using it. if you use it every single day and it still has the creases for two years that's a little that's that that is strange um I would maybe call Louis Vuitton or take it into a boutique and see what they say but it should be fine um it's just maybe a matter of how long or how often you you use it or daily uh, okay, Daniela's Barado, my good friend Daniela's. Uh, I'm saving up for a big purchase, but having trouble deciding. Should I go with the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM and Monogram or Demi Ben, or should I go with the extra mile and save up for a Chanel GST with gold hardware? Wow, <laughs> both of those bags are in my top five. Um, I would say if you want to make an extra special big purchase, I would go for the Chanel GST, especially because of all the buzz going around that it will no longer be around or that it's going to be extremely expensive moving forward. So I would go for the Chanel uh, with the gold tone hardware personally, uh, especially because they're a lot harder to find uh, than a um, than a never full MM in monogram. So I would go for the Chanel for sure. Uh, okay. Ellie, uh, hold on. I don't want to butcher it. Ellie Knight. Ah, I'm sorry. A, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Logo Mania scarf and the Burberry check wool square? House check, which one would you choose? Um, even though I have a Burberry scarf, uh, I do like the fact that it's extremely lightweight. But there is something about the Louis Vuitton Logo Mania scarf that I cannot put my finger on that I am obsessed with. Unfortunately, where I live, it is way too hot. Uh, even year, I mean, even in the dead of winter, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to use it because it's such a heavy scarf. But it is absolutely beautiful. Um, so I would have to say, depending upon where you live, 
if it, if you live where somewhere where it's extremely cold, uh, where you have very harsh winters, very harsh uh, falls, I would go for the Logomania. If you live somewhere more like I do, where it seems like it's 85 degrees year round, um, I would go for the Burberry. But um, you can't go wrong with either one. But that Logomania, it is just, I don't know, there's just something about it. Maybe it's the giant LVs or... I don't know, <laughs> but it is fantastic. One of the best scarves I've ever seen, but great question. Okay, uh, Fiji Chick, would you be able to do a video or let us know or me know how you keep your bags clean, specifically how you clean your bags with the Keta? I know you don't treat them, but if a stain gets on them, you gently wipe it. Can you elaborate on this? Okay, so for those of you that um, know, or for those of you that are new to my channel, I do not, one of the questions that I get asked the most is if I, um, what I use to treat my bags. And like she just said, I don't treat any of my bags. And um, to be honest, sometimes I have kind of taken a white cloth and just kind of patted down whatever it is that got on the bag. But at the same time, Viquetta is very tricky because it is a leather, so it will absorb whatever is on the is on the surface. Um, and you never want to put water on there, absolutely not at all, because what will happen, and I actually had one of my subscribers say the same thing, um, when you when you gently wipe the Viquetta with with um, with water, yes, the the water spot at that time will disappear, but as the bag patinas over time, those water spots will come back out uh, and you'll be able to see them. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm trying to say, but uh, I never put water on them whatsoever. And if you do get some kind of um, a smudge on it or something, I would just pat it down lightly with a white cloth just to see if you can pick up any residue that, it, that, the, um, that the stain might have left. But at the same token, all of my bags, it's just getting that over that initial first, I mean, <laughs> that initial first smear or first mark or smudge or stain on the Viquetta. I, I do not like that feeling. It is, I have so much anxiety when I have a brand new bag and I'm just like, I know it's happening. I know it's going to happen. I know it's coming. And then the minute it does, it's kind of almost like a relief. <laughs> And the reason why I don't treat any of my bags is because I kind of want my bags to tell a story. I kind of, if they have a stain, I, trust me, I will remember when it happened, how it happened, what it was. And uh, in a way, it'll kind of let me remember the day or what I was doing. And it's not always a bad thing. So I, I don't treat them. I always hope for the best, <laughs> uh, but I, it doesn't bother me. If once it gets that stain, like I said, it's, you can relax. And that's what I like the most about it. So when I, when I think about treating them, I just know that if I treat them, I'm still going to have that, that same anxiety. Yes. The treatment will kind of help, you know, help me be a little bit better as far as the process of patina or, you know, staining and stuff like that. But I just like the fact that I would be able to enjoy my bag, which is the whole reason why we buy these bags. Am I right? Because you want to enjoy them. You don't want to walk on eggshells when you have these bags. So, yes. <laughs> I don't treat them. Just rock those bags and hope for the best. But I have to say, whatever you do, if you can avoid, if you put lotion on your hands constantly, I would put the lotion on, let it dry, and then put your bag on or um, grab your hand, or grab your um uh, grab your bag with your hand because the oils and the lotions and all that other stuff will, um, will, uh, you know, go over, transfer over to the Viquetta. So be careful on that. Uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. what else? Melissa Bailey, what are your thoughts on Louis Vuitton bag charms and do you own any? Um, I do not own any bag charms. I am not a big fan of bag charms. I absolutely love the way they look. Um, but I kind of freak out, and I've said it in another in another video. I don't. You're gonna put the charm on hardware for the most part, and I just know that over time, if I keep leaving that bag charm on there, the rubbing of the hardwares together might um, make the the hardware chip off, or it'll just look a little different over time. So that's the main reason why I don't do uh, bag charms, and. Um, 
yes, they will adorn the bag and yes, it will look beautiful, but I rather put that money towards, uh, towards a bigger piece or, uh, something that I will actually use daily, uh, or I will interact with. So it's nothing against anyone that has bag charms. I, like I said, I think they look absolutely fabulous. It's just, they're not for me. Uh, okay. And Gar Garofia, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Fendi Monster Collection? I love the way the bag charms and poofs look and bandeau look, but they're really expensive for something so quirky. Same thing. Um, not a big fan of them. I can appreciate them, but not for me. And truth be told, I have a bandeau on my Speedy 30 Demi Azor, and it is actually starting to bug me because, it, where was I? I don't remember. I think I was at the grocery store and I put my bag down in the cart. And then when I went to pull it out, the, the bandeau got stuck in the cart in the metal part. I started freaking out. I pulled off the bag and then the bow just kind of fell apart. It seems like it's getting stuck on certain things. And I just have a feeling that I'm going to walk by somewhere or pass something that has a nail or something sticking out and it's just going to grab onto the bandeau and it's going to totally rip it. That is my biggest fear with the bandeau. So I think I might take it off, uh, especially because the bandeau, uh, the, where it is, it doesn't let all the sunlight hit the vaquetta. So it might make the tabs look different over time. So yeah, I'm, I'm starting to, <laughs> I'm starting to really not like the way the bandeau is on my speedy, but same thing. I'm not a big fan of any kind of charms. There only is one charm that I like on charm, if you will, on my bags. And that is the luggage tag. I just absolutely love the way that it looks, uh, especially on speedies because it's almost like a little mini luggage. So I think it's cute. Uh, okay. And Jen, Jen Lee Cinder, I'm sorry. What are the prices what, are the prices different for luxury goods in Paris or other parts of Europe than the States, specifically Chanel and Louis Vuitton? Yes, they are. Uh, primarily because uh, Louis Vuitton and Chanel are, uh, are French fashion houses. So when you think about it coming to the United States, you have to pay duty, you have to pay import. So therefore, it's a lot more expensive um, versus us having something that's made in the U.S. It's a lot cheaper here. For example, Tiffany & Co. Uh, I know that uh, some of the bracelets, they're a little bit, I think they're like 150, 175 pounds in, um, in the UK versus here, they'll be $125. So it is a big difference, uh, especially when you go to... Um, to Europe, they don't pay taxes. They get the value added tax or the VAT. Uh, so yes, they are, in my opinion, I think they're, they are considerably, uh, less expensive. Uh, big example, uh, keep all 55 is $1,790 here or $1,710 here in the States plus tax there with the VAT back. I think you're, you would only end up paying $1,400, $1,423. I don't know. I'm doing my research because I'm going to Europe this year. <laughs> uh, but I mean, look, I mean, just think about it. That's almost a three, four hundred, five hundred dollar difference for the exact same item. But then again, like I said, it is a, uh, a French fashion house. So it will be uh, less expensive there than actually here in the States or vice versa. Anything that's here um, will be less expensive here versus it being there. Anything that's made here. Uh, so yes, unfortunately. And I noticed it, trust me, when I went to Paris last year, two years ago, I was in awe of how, how, I mean, you almost feel like you, <laughs> like you hit the jackpot when you get something, uh, in, in Europe. And it's so, 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 so much less there than it is here. And it's so nice because <laughs> it's almost like it was on sale and it just makes it that better. <laughs> makes it that much more, be that much better. My goodness. It's having such a hard time talking today. Okay. So moving on, um, and Tiki best, are you enjoying your Hermes click clack bracelet? And do you think they're worth the money? I love the look, but they seem so pricey for basically costume jewelry. Um, okay. So am I enjoying my Hermes click clack bracelet? Absolutely. I love both of them. I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, even though you, it, I wouldn't say it's costume jewelry, uh, because 
for me, costume jewelry, when I think of costume jewelry, I think of jewelry that will turn color or fun pieces and stuff like that. Uh, and I absolutely think they're worth it. I think they're great. I think you should get them sooner than later because ju just like every other high-end luxury piece, they do go up in, um, in price as the, as the years go, go forward. But I, I just, I like them. I like, I absolutely love how simple they are and they just add so much chicness to your entire outfit. And I absolutely love them. I've had tons of compliments on them and, um, absolutely. If you're thinking about getting it, I I'd say go for it. Uh, I like the wider one personally, uh, even though I have pretty small wrists, but, uh, I, I don't know. I just think they're, I think they're great. Like I said, I think it's the small details that really make an item. I don't think things should be too busy. So yes, I think they're beautiful. I love my, both of mine and definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, okay. Mm hmm. Red Lily would love to know your opinions on the LV bandos. Do you have any? Yes, I do. I have two. And, uh, I was a really big fan of them in the beginning, but as time goes by, I'm not really feeling them for whatever reason. I can appreciate them. I think they are beautiful, but I think it's something that I'm not going to purchase moving forward. You never know though. There might be one that just absolutely you know, draws my attention. Uh, I think if I used them not as, you know, not as something I would put on my bag, but more so on me, I think I'd probably uh, be happier with them. So I might try putting them on, you know, on my hair or on my neck or something, something cute. I need to, I need to make a statement with these bandos. <laughs> uh, and she, oh, she lives in New Zealand and she said that the hot stamp in New Zealand is a Kiwi. How freaking cool is that? I love hearing about different hot stamps throughout the world. Uh, I can't even imagine. I would love to have a little Kiwi hot stamp. Awesome. But very, very good question. Okay. And pink girl 3533. What are your thoughts on the Chanel timeless walk in black caviar? I know you said you didn't like the Gucci disco because of the GGs. Um, and you know what, even though I love Chanel and I love walks, I, I, there is something about the timeless walk. It's pretty much just the black caviar with the dual, with the dual CCs on it. It doesn't have any hardware on the outside of it. And I don't know, it doesn't, I'm not attracted to it at all whatsoever. And, um, I looked at a few different pieces before and I thought about purchasing them, but it just, I don't know. It doesn't, I prefer the quilting. I like the quilting. I think it's, um, I think it's a little bit more chic, maybe if that's the word, I don't know. There's just something about the quilt that looks extremely, extremely beautiful to me versus it, uh, being more, um, it's a little bit more low key. It's, it's very simplistic. And yes, I said that I like simple, simple things. I don't like things that are too busy, but there is something about the timeless walk that it just doesn't, I, I wish I can tell you exactly what it is that, that doesn't really do it for me. <laughs> uh, okay. Louis 1228. I want an Alma PM and a BB. Plus, I want one in fuchsia and pomme de mer. Which color and size combo would you choose and why? Uh, so you want an Alma PM and a BB, and you want a fuchsia and a pomme de mer. And which one would I do? I would probably do the BB and the fuchsia. Uh, I would just like to have a smaller um, vernis pink bag. And for me, the Alma PM would have to be in pomme de mer. There is just something about a red bag that makes a statement to me. I, I personally have the Alma PM and the Cerise and I absolutely love the look of a beautiful red bag. So, uh, a bigger bag, obviously the BB is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more fun. So there, therefore I would go for the fuchsia, but definitely PM for the Pomme de Mor. Uh, okay. And I think I am almost done. Okay. Um, Patricia, Patricia G. I wanted to buy a blue Louis Vuitton shawl. At first I thought of the black denim and today I saw the new monogram sunrise in blue and it's gorgeous. Which one should I go for? Classic or new? Um, okay. So if you guys are thinking about getting shawls and you're not really into the denim, there are new ones that just came out. Like she said, the sunrise monogram, 
pretty much what it is, it's uh, three colors in one of a shawl. It's They're very, very beautiful. Uh, and I like the way that the colors transition from one to the other. But uh, I would personally go for the denim just because the denim would be a lot easier to be able to hide any snags or any stains or anything that you might get. Um, I personally, I love the look of most of the bold colors that the shawls come in. But I know I would freak out about um, about snags, so therefore I uh, I was there, or my hubby got me the the denim. So I would personally go for the denim. It's a little bit better over time as far as uh, the wear and tear on it. But if you're feeling that sunrise, I mean it is they're gorgeous. They are absolutely beautiful, and I like the the orangey pinky one. Oh my goodness. That thing is gorgeous. Uh, I'm not a big fan of blue, but like I said, I can appreciate the way that it transitions from the light to the dark. So very, very nice. Um, okay. And I have two more questions. Uh, lay, lay on Alta. I'm so sorry. I am butchering names left and right. Uh, I would like to hear your opinion on the Goyard bags. I have seen them personalized the same way as the LV Mon Mono. Do you know if they were first with this or if they copied LV? Well, uh, Goyard is actually the oldest, the oldest, uh, Parisian trunk maker, which was founded in 1853. Before 1853, it was actually called the House of Martin, and that was founded in 1792. So it's been around a long time. Louis Vuitton was founded in 1854. So it, it's, they're within the year. And, um, I honestly think that both of them were probably around the same time, if not within the, they were probably within maybe weeks or months within each other. Uh, I have tried to find out the exact date of which one's which, but I have yet to find, to find out which one it is. Uh, but I know both of them went to the world exposition and, um, they were the only two that were invited for the uh, for uh, for luggage or for trunk makers, and um, it's it's amazing that both of them have been personalizing items for over a century. So they've been doing this for a long, long time. And um, in the night in the nineteenth century, it was customary to have. Uh, for royalty or for rich families to have, or aristocrats to have their monograms on their uh, on their luggage pieces. So it's been around for a very, very long time. So like I said, I think they were both around the same time. If anything, it might be weeks or months with, uh, between the two. But uh, you know what? And I have to say, before I said I wasn't a big fan of Goyard bags, there was just something about them. But the more and more I see them, the more and more I do my research on them, I am, I don't know. I think I might be going towards Goyard. Um, they are a smaller company, a smaller French-based company than Louis Vuitton is, but they still make their bags. Um, they're still handmade. And uh, I don't know. Even though I think the outside is extremely busy, uh, says the girl who likes monogram. <laughs> but I don't know. There's just something about them. I, I absolutely love to learn about the history and I can appreciate them that much more because I know how long they've been around and what they've been doing. Uh, so uh, I like them. I have to say, I will retract my statement from before. I'm a big fan of Goyard bags. So don't be surprised if you see them on my channel within the next couple of months. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the very last question uh, is from Kinza Ashkar. Ashar. Uh, hi. Hi, my minx. I loved this video. Uh, do you get judged at your job for your bags? I feel so conscientious about prior judging. Now I don't share any of my luxury items anywhere on social media. Uh, yes, unfortunately, uh, people will judge no matter what. And do I get judged at my work? Absolutely. Every single day I hear someone say something about my bag. Um, and I think it's funny. I think it is hilarious that they, that they take the time to talk about my bags like it's going to like it's going to hold me back. <laughs> and they sit there and they, you know, they tell me, oh, why do you do this? Why do you do that? That's ridiculous. Why would you buy this bag? It's, it's so stupid. It looks just like a fake and blah, 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 blah. I literally sit there and I laugh and there's just, there's one girl in specific. Uh, she carries a replica I'm not here to judge. You do you. I do me. Uh, but she's sitting there throwing stones 
And I just looked at her and I said, you know what? Whatever helps you sleep at night, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm not going to change her mind. She's going to think what she thinks. I just think it's so funny. It is hilarious. It doesn't bother me. Um, it's just, I don't know. And some of my girlfriends at work, they, they tell me, Minnie, are, are, you, are you mad? Does that make you mad? Not at all. Not at all. Because, like I said before, and I'll say it again, you do you. My happiness is my happiness, and my money is my money, and I will spend it on whatever I like. It's, I mean, it's not like someone else's opinion is going to have any bearing on what I spend my money on. <laughs> so, you know what? Don't feel bad. I've told you guys before, don't ever feel bad. If you have that person that's constantly just digging and digging and wanting to make you feel bad, that is exactly what they want. Don't give them the satisfaction. Just have your bag and have your item or whatever it is and just say, you know what? Whatever. Whatever makes you happy. And trust me, they will boop, they will be quiet. They will shut up because they will they will know that they haven't gotten to you. They'll they'll know that they're they're it's not even worth it. So I can guarantee you they will stop doing it. <laughs> But that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for the wonderful questions. I know I, I went on a few different tangents on a few different uh, topics, but uh, I absolutely love doing Minx Mondays. I learned so much about you guys, and hopefully I give you guys some feedback and some uh, some info on some pieces that you guys were thinking about. But thank you guys so much again. And I will see you tomorrow with a what's in my bag. Because I promised you guys I would do one every single month. And I am a woman of my word. <laughs> so I will see you guys tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.